Tesla has just slashed pricing here in Australia. And by slashed, I mean dropped prices by approximately a metric bee's dick. Critics, of course, going all Paul Revere about this, except in this case, obviously, not the British about to paddle across the river. It's more of a Chinese thing. The big question, is this a desperation move? And should we perhaps change the call sign of Electric Jesus to Twit6 in light of recent events? Details next. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com. You and I get new cars. website card. Now, taking the Model 3 base model Povo Pack Pichitoa as an example, pricing for Tesla has been a little bit bride's nighty. Everyone says it. Since that vehicle launched in whatever it was, July of 2019 or something. Now, just thinking about that car, the Povo Pack Rear Wheel Drive Model 3, the pricing there kicked off at 66000 bucks initially, and then it rose as high as 73900 and fell back as low as 59900 with lots of up and down noise in between. That's in the space of just three and a half years, right? Last week's price cuts saw prices fall to 63900 considering the base model rear-wheel drive Povo pack, right? That's 2100 bucks lower than it was at the launch three and a half years ago. Let us have a deep dive into the desperation scenario there next. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Now, I'm not a hardcore IT guy, but I've heard enough, especially recently, about data breaches, scams and hacks to know that being online can be inherently risky and costly. You don't have to be tech savvy to use NordVPN. It's a simple one-stop cyber security solution. One click and you are protected from hackers, malware and pop-ups across as many as six devices. NordVPN is the world's fastest VPN. I don't even notice it running in the background, frankly. And it only costs about as much as a cup of coffee to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure every month. NordVPN can also save you money because you can assign your virtual location to another country where, for example, flights and accommodation might be cheaper than they are back at home. The same goes for streaming services and you can access live sporting events and other content that may not be available where you actually live. It's a pretty small price to pay for cyber security. Not to mention the potential savings also on the table. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC to get a huge discount off your plan plus four months free. Totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. As you know, I am not above criticising some of the spooky slash kooky things said and done from time to time by the Messiah. I have this quaint, some would say old-timey view that indefensible gibberish really does need to be called out for what it is if we want society to improve in the time domain, and I'm a person who really does want that. But I'd suggest that although the media is foaming at the mouth over these recent price cuts by Tesla, it's not a Paul Revere type scenario at all. It's really just another random movement in, in particular, Model 3 pricing, of which in three and a half years there have been nine movements, five increases and four drops. And they really have at this point roughly cancelled each other out basically. And the Model Y is the same kind of story on a, admittedly, more compressed timeline, right? That vehicle was launched in June of 22 for 68900 That's the base poverty rear-wheel drive variant. It had a 4.9% increase one week after the launch, which kind of screams we didn't sort out that very well. But then... Roughly six months later, which would be last week, there was a 4.7% drop, 
which caused prices essentially to return to where they were when the vehicle was launched. And the performance all-wheel drive version of the Model Y, the pricing there followed essentially the same trajectory. Neutral buoyancy has been returned, in other words. Interestingly, according to data released at about the same time as Tesla prices dropped by the Federal Chamber of Automotive Asshole Industries in... <coughs> <laughs> working tirelessly to push Toyota's barrow in the nation's capital. 60% of all EVs sold in this country are Teslas, roughly. And what this means, if you didn't pay attention at school, is that six out of every ten EVs sold currently wears the Messiah's badge. But Worryingly for Tesla, there is certainly more competition inbound and imminent, is there not? I mean, BYD and MG are doing a good job together, mounting something of an offensive from the cheap seats. And that's got to sway some people who are thinking about buying, for example, the cheapest Model 3 they can get their grubby mitts on. Not full-on Kool-Aid sipping cult members, obviously, because that kind of thing would be heresy, but some people who just want a car, sure. Now... Hyundai and Kia, they're not doing such a bad job potentially either. A smack bang in the middle of Tesla's target market. But the only thing there is they each have their thumbs in the distal ends of their EV supply digestive tract and they are unable to poop out the requisite number of EVs currently to make any kind of difference to Tesla whatsoever. So that's an imminent threat, not an extant one in the middle of Tesla's market share. And then, of course, up the top, you've got umpteen car makers vying for position, not doing a particularly good job yet, but you can see that they're gearing up for it and they will, in time, gain momentum. The BMWs, mercedes Benzes, etc., part of the equation, together with Volvo and other lesser manufacturers, all wanting to make you think that their EV is at least as good, if not better, than the Messiah's. So there's that, and I'd suggest that this is a good thing generally, right? More competition is absolutely what markets need. So that's going to be good for consumers when that develops, right? And that is going to place pressure on Tesla, which has had to, to date something of a free kick. However, there is a shortage of base metals, the important metals, lithium and cobalt, manganese, things of this nature that are really needed for battery production. And that's going to be bad for consumers because it's going to mean an order bank and waiting time and things of this nature. In other words, no real incentive to cut prices. So there's that. And then there's just an overarching sort of umbrella of upward cost of living pressure, meaning that people are generally disinclined to spend money optionally, and there more and more people are falling into this category. And we've also got other factors such as this looming conflict with China. You know, if things kick off in Taiwan and Big Brother in America just overreacts and then we do what we always do, which is basically brown-nosed Americans, and that could be just bad generally for the car industry, for consumers. I don't think any of us really want that, but the threat of that is there in the background and you have to kind of acknowledge it because it might be a salient uh, factor into the future as well. So my strong advice on all of this stuff is just listen hard to what the economists say and then just bank on the exact opposite actually happening. Because if you view them through that kind of prism, they are remarkably good at predicting the future. And if you are an economist, I would say, congratulations, dude. Just one small thing. Economics is not just like physics, only harder. That's where you guys all go wrong, just saying. Now, <laughs> you gotta also remember, that'll get back, that the cheapest way for ordinary Aussies to own an EV currently is by Novated Lease, which is also called salary sacrifice. This is not the case if you are self-employed, like if you're a sole trader or something, that kind of finance is not available to you. If you are a self-funded retiree, as I understand it, that kind of finance is not available to you. But if you are a working class man, as Jimmy Barnes would have said, then that kind of finance is absolutely on the table, provided your employer supports it. And the reason I'm saying this about 
EVs and the ownership and the novated leasing being the cheapest way to go is because the Albanese government recently changed the legislation about fringe benefits tax and essentially obliterated it if you novated lease an EV or a plug-in hybrid currently, provided that vehicle is under the luxury car tax threshold for fuel-efficient green vehicles. <laughs> A novated lease is absolutely the cheapest and most tax effective way to own that vehicle if you are on a salary for most people. Obviously, there's a dimension of all finance that relies on a careful assessment of your own individual financial position, right? But the statements I'm making are general and accurate in that context. So it's going to be cheaper to own an EV that way than it is to own a combustion car costing tens of thousands of dollars less. So that's a stimulus package from the government and you're a mug if you don't take advantage of it. If you've been, for example, on the fence about EVs because there's a lot of people who go, yeah, yeah, I like the concept, I'd really buy one if only there wasn't this incredible price disparity between combustion and EV. And what the government's recent rejig means is that if you are in the market for a novated lease, if that is accessible to you, available to you, then it absolutely is going to be cheaper to own an EV than an equivalently priced combustion vehicle. So there's that. They're also a great way for employers to reward employees. And the cool thing about it from the employer's point of view is that it really doesn't cost you anything and there's no risk. So it's pretty easy to set up. You just have to set up a payroll deduction and fill in the forms and blah, blah, blah. Bob's your mother's brother there. So that's kind of nice. If you want to know more about that, because this is the most relevant part of the EV ownership equation that has recently had the goalposts just go from here to blah, 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 way over there, then just click the link up there somewhere and I've got a whole blog post on that on the website and it'll give you more information and if you are that employer who is kind of interested in offering that but doesn't know how to go about it just go to that page and fill in the form and I'll get my dudes to talk to your dudes and hopefully we can make shit happen. So in summary I'd suggest that the recent Tesla price drop is not a nose jerk reaction to the imminent e-bomb of uh, China coming out and upsetting the apple cart. But there is going to be more competition into the future that is potentially good for you if you're on the fence about an EV. And I am actually happy to see Tesla apparently price protecting people who they've locked in at a higher price who are waiting for these cars and making them available at that lower price. 